Welcome, everybody, to uh, another edition of what I call uh, What Makes This Photo Great. It's a uh, collection of photographers that have inspired me over the years. I think they inspire a lot of photographers. We're not doing in-depth things. The uh, photographer we're talking about today has had many in-depth uh, reviews, but I, uh, I, I love looking at great photographs and great photographers who consistently build on a, an aesthetic that's all their own uh, just knocks me out. And Dan Winters, I think, will probably be considered in, in, our, in the future, will be considered one of the best photographers of the 21st century. Um, I don't care what comes after Dan, he has uh, really set the bar super high. Um, and Winner's work is, I mean, it's just so perfectly done. It's just so uh, uniquely his that when you talk about a body of work, when you talk about a style, his name comes to mind instantly, Dan Winner's. So let's take a look at a few of Dan Winner's photographs here, and I'll tell you what I, I really like about them, and I tell you what inspires me about them, I'll tell you what maybe uh, you should take away as well. Now, number one, you have to understand that Dan builds most of his sets. He builds the sets. So this uh, first picture that we're going to look at here of Helen Mirren, the actress, is on a set Dan built. This is not composite photography. This is right, you know, with a camera photography. And uh, there's certainly Photoshop involved, but he's not assembling them in Photoshop. He's actually shooting this. So a really a fascinating uh, picture here of something that Dan had in his head, wanted to shoot her in this way. Now, what I love about it, of course, is I've always liked uh, putting the uh, background as a visible part of the subject. In other words, the fake background. I've done uh, several assignments over the years where the background stand is actually in the pictures. We did, we did some people... Uh, some veterans once and we did it at a place where there were a lot of other veterans so we set it up with our cloth background and we had them stand there but we actually shot off the background and could see the event going on behind them and it's kind of a nice feeling but in this particular shot notice how Dan does that back here to give a perfect background to this part of Helen Mirren but she's in another place she's an actress think about the the context here She's in a beautiful, well-dressed, uh, high couture dress against this beautiful gray background. But in reality, look at, the, at where she is. Also, notice how the light falls on her here and it starts to, to drift off down here. The beautiful thing about really great photographers is that they use gradient. They use flags. They use uh, cookies. They use things to modify the light other than just put it up in the, in the, in the sky. You know, when I, I see a, some photographer doing a behind the scenes and they're, they're giving me a lighting uh, thing. Oh, here's how you light something. And they've got just a, you know, like an octobox on a stand. I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, there's so much more you can do with light. And I know you can do it in Lightroom. You can do it in Photoshop and all that stuff. But what's the fun in that? I mean, you know, make it there. This is what Dan does. This is a beautifully done portrait. Look how the light extends beyond her, lighting up the background with a gradient, with actually a couple of gradients. There's one here, there's one back here, there's one in the in the tarp here. Gradients, and she just pops right out of the back. If you can make your image pop, like Dan makes Helen Mirren pop out of this background, you've got it made. I mean, you're going to have uh, an interesting shot just from that pop. Uh, here's a shot of my daughter's favorite actor in the world. And, um, uh, and you know, I mentioned uh, using flags, etc. This is one of the things Dan does a lot. Uh, flag the light off, get a little bit of a shadow going on the face here. Get, li get a little bit of a hard light coming this way. He uses grid spots. He uses snoots. And he uses big ambient fills. And that's the real key to understanding this kind of light is that there's a large ambient fill and then he shoots over that ambient fill. So he sets the shot up for 5.6, lights it for 5.11, so the shadows never go darker than 5.6 exposure. So really creating a, a dynamic uh, image, not a 
not a high def image, not a fake uh, Photoshop high def, uh, high definition or HDR type of image, but working it in the lights. This is stuff you can do on Ektachrome. You all remember Ektachrome, don't you? No, you don't. Uh, but look again, the gradients. We've got a gradient in the face. We've got a gradient across the, the, the jacket that he's wearing. We've got gradients in the background. It's just super, super cool. You'll also notice that with a lot of Dan's work that I'm showing today, not all of his work, but the work I'm showing here, the, the stuff that really gets me, these are not portraits where the, the subject can move around. It's not like, okay, now move around, move left, move right. Oh, that's really cool. Dan has a shot in mind, and he puts them in that shot, and the, the movements are very small. You can see the grid spot hitting the face. You can, if you're a photographer, you know if he moves his face two inches, it's going to totally change the light. It's really a very exacting science. Here's another shot from that same set. All of these things around here, this is a set that Dan built, puts all these things in there. I think this was for a movie that Cumberbatch did about uh, code breaking in the World War II. So I think that's sort of reminiscent of the tie and the background. Notice the colors, the grays, the muted colors to let uh, uh, the uh, subject pop out. You know, so, you know, sometimes when you find old recording devices and stuff, we never think about it. Dan collects them so he can use them as sets. Isn't that great? Another shot. Now, Dan shoots a lot of actors and actresses, something I'm totally not interested in. I'm just really interested in the amazing photography. Uh, this is a famous actor, I'm told. I, I guess. I don't I sort of recognize him, but I don't know who it is. Don't care. Uh, I love the, the use of the magnifying glass on the eye. Isn't that amazing? And again, these little goodies that, that Dan picks up and builds. This is a set, again, uh, created just for this photograph. And by the way, please don't send me hate mail because I don't know who actors are. I don't pay any attention um, to actors and actresses makes my wife and my daughter crazy. They just, they think I'm an idiot, but I don't, I don't know. I, run, I recognize some, but not others. Anyway, uh, please don't do that. Beautiful shot. Look at the lighting. It's all soft back here. And we've got this sort of light right on his face, yet it's very soft. Now, is this a grid spot or something like that? Well, we can kind of cheat it and see that it's a bit of a special, right? We've got a little shadow under the nose, a little shadow here, but we're really bringing out that face in the middle of this, this, this dark background. He's built a frame, inside a frame, inside a frame. Do you see that? And then, of course, repeated that same thing up above with the, the, the mannequin head. Uh, I, I just, I love the muted color. I love the 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 sense of style and design that he brings, and uh, it's just tremendous work. Uh, this is really great, uh, using the reflection of the, uh, the subject in the knife here. Now, if you write me and say, well, did he do it in camera, did he do it in Photoshop? I imagine he did it in camera. Um, it's just the way he, he shoots, as far as I'm aware of. Just the way he shoots, it's in camera, yes. And the, uh, the, the hand reaching forward here on the, the desk is just amazing, isn't it? And again, that same sort of color space, you know, the bricks, the, the hauntingness of the space, the context or lack thereof is amazing. And again, we've got that very soft light and we've got that little bitty hard light coming right down here. You can see the shadow under the chin, under the nose, under the eyes. Definitely a special light coming down. But again, look at the gradients. A gradient here, and a gradient here, and a gradient on the subject, and a gradient in the whole image. And then the subject then popping out, being very sharp. Isn't that a great image? Isn't that great? I love this. Great, super simple portrait head style, handmade background, um, softer light. There was really uh, a, a bit of a special going on here, but you can see the ambient light, see how it's going under the hat here and down into where the neck would, is, would normally be dark because of everything. And then you can see the special throwing just that little shadow right there, that little shadow under the lip. So yeah, there's a special on her face. When I call a, a special, is like a snood, a, a grid spot, a, a, a small a soft box, a soft box that's, that's got a, 
the cover removed, something, um, a little small octobox, a long throw octobox at a distance, something adding just a little bit of character to the light. Um, and then, of course, the gradients. Look at the gradients everywhere. Great color scheme. It's just the kind of portrait. Oh, and by the way, notice the face coming this way, and the hands going that way. Uh, it's just the kind of portrait that that uh, that that shows incredible technical skill as well as beautiful aesthetic skill. So this is a hugely technical image and beautifully done to the point where we really don't even notice it. Now I said I didn't know actors. I know this guy. I'll watch any movie this guy is Denzel and uh, in that great room. Look at that, you know context of it. Notice the wide angle lens bringing the feet forward and the and the body backward. The hands are huge. The context of these lines here. Uh, a haunting room. A special light up at the top. A special coming from the right throwing a sharp shadow to the edge here. Very, very fascinating. I think this is another image where you can really see that ambient build that we're talking about that the ambient built up in this room allows the sharp shadow to be shown, but it, it's, it's a light shadow. It's not super black. It's not one light. This is, what, this is the, the point where you start to understand the light when you're shooting. You start to see it and you start to go, wait a minute, I can control this. I've got this. And you begin to own the light instead of the light owning you. It's really fabulous. Here's a, a recent photograph of Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers. Uh, and again, notice the ambient light. And it's a big ambient light. You know you can tell? Look at the highlight on the ear. Do you see that highlight? You see the highlight along here? This is a big softbox or scrim or whatever on this side of the face because it's giving, look at the highlight there, that big soft highlight. It's dark because it's underexposed. He's exposing for the, the special on the face and of course, bringing this uh, this highlight up in it, but into into it. So it's not an underexposed photograph. It's a correctly exposed photograph for two light sources: for this soft light over here, and for that special down here, making sure the special doesn't just burn all the way out. Isn't that incredible? Then this shot, just like you kind of go, this this is lighting with a capital L, lighting with a capital L. It's perfect. It's persuasive, it's unique, it tells a story, it feels like a portrait of Mr. Rogers. Those of you who don't know Mr. Rogers, I'm sorry, he's, he's a man from the past who was a really great guy. Um, here's another picture of Tom Hanks taken earlier. And uh, again, you can see, you can see the, the, the reflections. Ears are reflective, ears are shiny. They're shinier than faces. Uh, so you can see those little lobes of the ears catching a highlight. So it's a reflect. It's a reflecting the light source. It's a bare, very large soft box over on this side uh, with a, a octa box on this side and a grid spot right on the, this part of the face. So sh a, a smaller light source in close for this light and a nice uh, uh, grid right down the middle of it to pop it face just a little bit more. And it's just a little bit more. Just a tiny bit more. Uh, not, not enough to even throw sharp shadows. Just enough to lift it up. It's one of my favorite portraits uh, of, of Dan Winters. And by the way, you'll notice it's shot on 4x5 film. You'll notice that the this shot was shot, shot on film. That means he's not looking through the camera going, okay, move this way, move that way. This is a very slow, deliberate setup of the photographer of the subject. He knew what he wanted with Tom Hanks. He knew exactly what he wanted. Now Tom is working probably chin down a little bit, maybe to the right a little bit, up just a little bit, but he's not changing his position, not moving left and right, doing all that stuff. He's just holding it. It's marvelous. It's a great way to shoot. Here's a, a great shot with the bees. Notice the gradient in the background, always keeping the light around the face, but also notice how different he shoots a female than he does a male. He does these specials with these very sharp lights. And when he shoots 
a woman, he's got the softer light. You can see in, in the eye, we've got a soft box. And we've got a big reflector down below, keeping the chin bright, keeping this bright. And one of the things about reflectors below, some photographers call them clamshells. I don't really call it a clamshell because it isn't a clamshell. It's actually what, what I call classic beauty. Uh, you have a big, right below where we're seeing here is a big white card coming out towards the camera that's reflecting here and then the, the soft box or octo whatever that is there in the eyes coming down you can see it's just almost dead center it's right off the right off center of camera right here and we get the highlights here we get the highlights over here we get everything that we need to give us depth and dimension within this photograph and it's really 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 awesome I just, I love it when the light is so, I, I guess it, it, it works on so many different levels. It exposes the subject, of course, that's what light does. But it also sculpts, defines, uh, creates dimension, creates shape. It's just, just huge. And our last shot here is uh, this, uh, this is a, a classic, uh, Irving Penn started doing this, uh, uh, sort of V-wall thing. Um, and uh, a lot of photographers of uh, Mark uh, Hauser, who we talked about earlier, have done have done the same thing. And of course, um, Dan Winters has his own take on it. It's uh, distressed. There's crap down here. The actor is leaning back against it. These are these little walls are great. And the, the light is centered. So you can see the the circle of the of the octa right here you can also see that there's very little fall off on our subject so that octa is really just lighting him up there you can see it in the shoe you can see it on the shoe tip here uh, and giving also a natural um, sort of vignette it's very simple but look at the incredible design the center point the leading lines the the obtuseness of the chair that breaks the leading lines and gives it dimension down in the bottom of the picture, gives it dimension that is somewhat lacking when you use this. I mean, if you crop this picture like this, it'd be hard to figure out where the uh, subject was, but uh, here it's it's a really, really cool use of it. And you'll also notice that, that Dan tends to use uh, slightly wider lenses for some of his shots than a lot of people would call a portrait lens. But uh, just really great work. Dan Winters, uh, there's links below to some videos and to some links and to, of course, Dan Winters' website, some books that you should uh, uh, check out. His book, Road to Seeing, is probably one of the best photo books you can buy. Uh, so, so many things to see here. And I, I've gone a little bit long on Dan Winters, but, I, I, you know, I just like his stuff so much. And by the way, uh, if anybody wants to send me a Christmas gift, I'd love that jacket. Yes, I would. If you like uh, what I'm doing here, just hit the like button. I really appreciate it. I don't ask people to subscribe anymore. I, nobody subscribes, and why would you? Um, if you hit the like button, uh, that helps uh, YouTube know that people looked at it, they liked it, and that's it. Anyway, you'll see links to my website below. You'll see stuff for uh, Dan Winters below. Thanks, everybody. We'll get out of here. Take care.